Now, ladies and gentlemen, what is better than a normal World Cup? A World Cup with countries you've never heard in it. Today, we have got what the World Cup will look like with about 10 years more of expansion according to FIFA, because every single nation in the world we have put into a 228 team World Cup. That is right, we're here on Football Manager and we are gonna be seeing what nation would come out on top if they all just had a scrap together. We've got everybody here, okay? We've got Fiji in the place. Can honestly wholeheartedly say I've never seen Fiji play football before, but I'm very much looking for Bruce Hughes. Nah, that's... Fam, you can't be from an exotic place and be called Bruce Hughes. But today we'll be pitting them all up against each other and seeing who comes out on top at the Qatar World Cup. Now if you're going to enjoy this one, feel free to slap a like on it and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. Over 2,953% of you are currently not subscribed, so I'd really appreciate it if you hit that big red button. And also, shouts out to BBC Sounds for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you more about them a little bit later on. Now, as I meant, we've gone through some of the teams here, but genuinely, no stone is unturned. Here. We've got Macau and they've got their full team. Okay, this isn't just like oh, yeah They'll just be random grayed out players here If you don't know on football manager if a team doesn't have any players They'll just get like attributed some really bad ones. We've got Sheng Chang Long sick name, bro Greenland who I only realized recently have an actual national team and people living there are involved as well For some reason they've got the Czech Republic flag. I don't know why but without any further ado We are gonna jump into this one. I'm not entirely sure when the tournament starts. Let me just have have a gander at this. For one thing I'll be relying on other than the World Cup this winter for my entertainment is BBC Sounds. Now this is a brilliant app that has a like wide variety of BBC shows as well as podcasts all in one place. Now, obviously because of the wide variety of shows that are on the platform there's basically something for everybody. You can even listen into live radio if you want to as well and it's great on the go because obviously you can tune in on your phone whether you're commuting to work, on the way to the gym or simply trying to ignore someone that's trying to talk to you on the bus. It's got something for everybody. One show that I'm particularly interested in is one called Songs to Live By uh, and obviously it's quite music oriented as the name would suggest. It revolves around like black artists and black culture within music and sits down maybe current artists like a Hardy Caprio who features for example and an artist or maybe even a poet from like the 70s or 80s pairs them together and gets them to talk about their influences and the things that they enjoy about the music they create. That's something you're interested in feel free to tune in and you can download the BBC Sounds app using the QR code on the screen or the link down in the description but either way there's a show for everybody so go and check it out. So the fixtures start on the 14th of August we've got a while to sim forward before we see these games in action so we've got like a first qualifying round here which just has basically everybody in it that will get put into like a, a first round it's kind of like the FA Cup basically and it all just factor down into eventually a winner out of all of this madness and obviously See, don't get it twisted. This is Football Manager. We can still watch all of the games. I mean, we won't. That, that's a lie. We will not watch all of the games. Otherwise, I will be here for the next six weeks. But what we will do is, like, take a look at a few highlights from some of the, the terrible teams. And then when we get towards the end of the competition, we'll maybe watch, like, the final, for example. The World Cup is officially one day from starting. We are ready to go. We've got one day left. I'm going to sim that. And then we're going to see how this qualifying round goes. The qualifying round happened. And now we've got bare groups. Oh, my days. Okay. Please, for the love of God, tell me they don't all have to play against each other. Ah, oh, no way! Nah, I can't do this. I actually, this is ridiculous. We've got 19 team groups, basically, and they all have to play against each other until the end of the group stage. This is gonna take literally years. Oh my God. Okay, well, let's see how the qualifying round went then. We've got some interesting scorelines. Fiji, my boys, they're out to Liberia. Australia won 7-0. France only beat Cuba 2-0. Probably an inquest is required there. Slovenia lost to Haiti. What else have we got? Mexico slapped up Laos. Montenegro won 14-0 against American Samoa. There's probably other things that you'll see that I'll miss because there's a lot going on here. Turkey are out. They lost to 12-0. Bahrain beat Saint-Pierre and Miquelon. Who are that? Absolutely mental stuff. So as I said, we've now got a situation. 19 teams in each group with a selection of different teams in and the top 10 uh, qualify. We've got a first round group here that has all. 
Argentina, Brazil and France in it, as well as Puerto Rico, French Guyana and Cape Verde. There are six of those groups. Can't lie, I'm just gonna sim through all of this and then we'll get back to the knockouts. We finally sim through all of the group stage games and before we see any of the tables, I just wanna show you one of the maddest results I think that we've had. I think this might be the biggest win uh, that we've had so far. It is a 12-1 victory from Sweden over Sri Lanka. My Sri Lankan G's, I'm sorry. You managed six shots on target, one goal, which was right at the end, so probably a little bit of a consolation there, uh, but I want to see the goals. I can't even lie. Sweden had 43 shots. All right, what are we saying? There's the first. Larsen, I mean, the keeper has made some kind of save. This one's bounced around a lot. That is probably the exact quality of goal that you would expect Sri Lanka to concede. Lovely ball through, not much marking. Keeper, again, probably needs to position himself a little bit better. So this is goal number six. So it was six nil at the break. Good stuff from Sweden. In fact, no, it was seven nil. They scored two back-to-back -back corner headers. I'm just waiting for Sri Lanka's goal. But here we go. The main dons, Giantha Soiza, puts it across and Sri Lanka grab a goal. We love to see it. The minnows, that's what this tournament is all about. But as I mentioned, the World Cup, we've got the groups now. And uh, I want to see all of these. I want to see all the groups. Right, Group A, there's a lot to get through here. Some of the smaller nations already kind of filtered out really in Group A, which was really strong. We've got France, Portugal, Ghana, Serbia, Brazil, and Argentina, Australia, Norway, Iran, and Egypt making it through. Brazil and Argentina only fifth and sixth, which seems a little bit crazy. I don't know if there were any like crazy shocks. Group B, Sweden topped that one, then Poland, Qatar, Chile, the Ukraine, Bulgaria, Canada, Angola, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and North Macedonia. Didn't lose anyone like particularly big there. Sri Lanka got one point and conceded 103 goals. Group C is where we find Belgium, England, Morocco, Russia, Scotland, Venezuela, South Korea and co. Gabon making it through as well as Thailand. There was 12 teams that qualified from that one. So it's different actual amount depending on the group. Who conceded the most? Ah, uh, Mongolia. 10 to Mozambique. Mozambique could ship 10 as well to somebody else. How bad are Mongolia? Group E saw Romania top. How in the world did Romania beat Spain? I need to see this. Big ups Romania, man. They only lost to Ken- I don't know how they lost to Kenya, but Czech Republic, Algeria, and then Switzerland beat Spain. Fair enough. Fair enough. Switzerland, Czech Republic, Algeria, Finland, Kenya, Congo, and Suriname. Ecuador didn't qualify. That's kind of peak. And then the final group, Group F, Italy, Jamaica, Mexico, Nigeria. I can't lie, even with all these nations in this competition, I was still expecting Nigeria to let me down. But they managed to do the business and qualify, along with Denmark, Colombia, Paraguay, the Gambia, and Georgia. Macau conceded 131 got right. We need an investigation here. They conceded 16 to Italy. Impossible. 11 nil to Montenegro and 11 nil to Mexico. What I do want to see actually is two really terrible nations just battling it out. Mongolia. I need to see them face Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea absolutely battered them. I need to see just what the goals looked like in a game of this quality. We go again. I don't know why it's in slow motion. McDonald. Not a very Papua New Guinea name, but we keep it moving. Lovely effort from Sabua. Sensational stuff, mate. But right, that does now mean that we've got a second round set up where we go back into the knockout format. All the fixtures are here on the screen. If you're looking for England, we're facing Congo. Wales up against Panama. We've got some bigger matchups, I think, now as well. Like Portugal versus Poland. Something you could see at the actual World Cup. Mexico v Argentina. That's going to get rid of a pretty big nation. Qatar is still in this as well, so they're still represented at the home World Cup. Yeah, let's get amongst this, man. Some stats at the halfway mark. Uruguay have scored the most goals with 86, then Sweden on 84. The form book is looking great for Ghana and Nigeria, the Western African nations. And your top scorer right now is Robert Lewandowski. When he's not making TikToks, he's scoring goals. We're back, lads. The third round has kicked off. England needed extra time to beat Congo. That does not fill me with a lot of confidence. Who was the goal scorer? As Raheem Sterling scored in the last minute of extra time. That is depressing for us, but heartbreaking for Congo. Looking through the rest of this, we've got Nigeria dumping Gabon out. Scotland are out to Cameroon. Wales beat Panama. Northern Ireland are out. Is there anything mad surprising here? I can't lie. Portugal and Italy stayed in. Thailand were probably one of the lowest ranked sides left, maybe. So who's holding it down for the small nations? I don't feel like there's been a single shock there. Mexico beating Argentina is crazy. Argentina 
Argentina are out already in the second round. Yeah, Angola are holding it down. 70th position in the FIFA World Rankings. They've got to be the lowest rated team left, right? I'm a big fan of this. Uruguay are out already. Crazy scenes. Luis Suarez is not handballing anything this time around. Like, listen, this is Angola fan TV now. I don't even care. We must have forget that it's been raining, so. Right. It's been raining? Yeah. Are no. you being serious? They've got a guy called Show. I mean, he'll be hoping that he puts on a show for the rest of this World Cup. So the third round, already I'm just looking for Angola. Where are they? Angola are facing off against Belgium. I right, listen, do the unthinkable. Angola, please, I'm begging you here. Elsewhere, any interesting matchups? Denmark and Finland in the Scandinavian derby. Brazil v Portugal. That's probably the biggest game so far. So we go again. We're going to go to the 23rd of January to find out who is going to get through from this set of games. What is going on here? The second group stages, you know. Honestly, lads, I don't even know at this point. Angola is still in. That's all I care about. Let me search the World Cup and see what on earth is kicking off here. So the third round, see, ended like this. Italy beat Colombia. The US are out. Peru, Spain lost to Sweden. So we've lost Spain and Argentina. We lost Portugal as well. Ireland, Romania are out as well as Egypt, Georgia, Cameroon and Angola beat Bel- Oh my God. No, Angola are the greatest team alive. Angola might genuinely, this is sensational. This might be the underdog story of the entire thing. Can you believe it? So now there's another group stage because we've got four groups of four. There's 16 teams left. For some reason, instead of just doing knockouts, we're back into the groups again. We've got Austria, Brazil, Italy, Sweden, Denmark, Ghana, Iran, and then Wales in group B. Angola could get out of that group. That's the crazy thing. Uh, it seems so long ago when St. Martin and Sao Tome and Principe were left in this competition. I hope I did the, the small nations some glory before they went out, like the US Virgin Islands with Zachary Nelthrope and Dusty Good. He plays for new vibes. Impossible. I really hope there was an old vibes and they decided, you know what, actually, lads, we need to spice this up a little bit. Now, this has opened a whole can of worms now. I need to see some of the most ridiculous names. Rascari Cox, a sensation. I'm, I'm a big fan of that name here. Bonnet. Ivani Calvinhoven. Calvinhoven sounds like someone made up a word to try and fit in in the Netherlands. And they've got a team called Uruguay. Right, safe. Yeah, that sounds good to me. We could lose a big name out of Group A, I can't lie. But other than that, we've, it seems like we've lost quite a few big nations already. Portugal gone, Argentina, Belgium obviously, Spain as well went early. We've basically just got Brazil, Italy, France and England, I would say in terms of like serious powerhouses. When did we lose Germany? That completely passed me by. Germany went out in the qualifying round to Morocco. Germany didn't even make it to the first group. I was going to say I don't remember seeing them at all. And they lost to a 95th minute equalizer. That's crazy. That's easily the, the maddest thing about this so far. Right, cool. We're going to sim to the 8th of, or 9th of February, basically, and see how these groups end up. Here we go, then. Let's take a look at the second group stages. And the most important thing is Angola are out, ladies and gentlemen. Angola are out. And the most crushing thing is that it was on goal difference. I mean, the fact that Nigeria are in still out of the same group as England, like, that's my nationality sorted. But Angola, you will never be forgotten. In the other groups, Italy and Brazil make sense there. But again, only by one goal ahead of Sweden. So Brazil making a hash of things so far. Wales and Denmark still going. Then France and Mexico, which makes sense out of Group C. And as I mentioned, England and Nigeria making it to the quarterfinals. Some interesting teams though here, I can't lie. Wales, Denmark, Nigeria, Mexico. Like there's gonna be like mad teams in the semis here. Nigeria against Brazil in the first quarterfinal and Denmark v France, Mexico v Italy in the battle of the green, white and reds. And then Wales versus England in the battle of the UK. And if England lose that, we're never hearing the end of it from Wales. Were there any games that were crazy during all this? England beating Angola 4-0. How could you? Where was the need? You could have just stopped that one, realistically. We'll go to the quarterfinals now and I'll start showing you some of the highlights from the games. Come on, Nigeria and England. As if after all this, it could still actually come home. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been let down. To biblical proportions, Nigeria and England are both out. There's some crazy results here. I'm not gonna lie. Mexico as well beating Italy. France are still going strong and Brazil are still in the tournament. I need to see Mexico versus Italy because this could be crazy. Now, Italy took the lead. Chiesa with the ball through to Chiro Immobile. Lovely stuff. Then Mexico equalized. Ball across and Chucky Lozano was there to stick that one in. And then took the lead late on as well in the 81st minute. They must have thought they'd won it when Raul 
Raul Jimenez had his header, sorry, blocked. And Carlos Vela was there on the rebound. But then in the 88th minute, Verratti down the right-hand side puts it in. And Moyes Keane is there to equalise. Italy think they've got the momentum with them. Then Alvarado puts it across. And Carlos Vela is the Mexican hero after extra time. And they deserved it as well. I can't even lie. And then other than that, I need to see the England Wales. This one actually went to penalties. And we went out on penalties thanks to a miss from Joe Gomez. But let me see the goals. Raheem Sterling again grabbing a goal. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, you know, scoring. How he's involved in the England setup, I don't know. But he did at least manage to get a couple goals. This was the England opener. Lovely ball from Gomez into Sterling. Then Wales come forward in the second half with Nico Williams down the right. Swings it in and there's Gareth Bale. Into extra time straight off the bat and Wales managed to grab themselves a goal. Brennan Johnson. I think Jordan Pickford. He might not want to look at that one again, I can't lie. Then Saka finds Oxlade-Chamberlain seven minutes before the end. And then we go out on penalties. Crazy stuff. Fuming. Gareth Bale even missed the pen in that as well. And so that means we've got a semi-final setup here of Brazil versus Wales. Wales have done incredibly, by the way. Every other country in the world is involved in this tournament and they are in the semis, along with Mexico, who face France as well. Theoretically, we should get a France-Brazil final here. But I have a feeling there could be a little bit of an upset on the cards. Okay, no, it was, it's not surprising, lad. I'm sorry I got your hopes up. Brazil versus France in the final. Brazil needed extra time, though, to beat Wales. 3-2 in the end before France dismantled Mexico 3-0. France, they've been unchallenged. I don't remember a time where France almost didn't win or almost didn't qualify. They look in charge and are probably the favourites going into this final. But Brazil's extra time v France. I need to see this. This game is ridiculous. So Wales took the lead through Kiefer Moore, right? Good start. You know, Brazil got an equaliser. But the end of this game is crazy. In the 92nd minute, Wales must have thought they'd won it. And they were two minutes away from winning it when Gareth Bale popped up to do the business as he always does in off the crossbar. But Brazil, just a minute and a half later, through Bobby Firmino, a goal that was VAR checked as well, equalised in dramatic fashion. And in the 94th minute of extra time as well, Gabriel Jesus won it for Brazil. Wales could have actually been in the final. They just needed to hold on for like two minutes, literally at the end. This, ladies and gentlemen, is it. The 200 team World Cup final. Every single nation in the world has fought for a place here. And these are the two teams that have come out on top. It's Brazil versus France in the World Cup final. I'm just in the away end. Do you think I've got no financial capacity for a box? No chance, mate. France with the first chance. Nabil Fekir with a free kick as well. And it's an absolute screamer. Nabil Fekir with the first goal of the World Cup final. And it's an absolutely disgraceful goal. France are dominating this one. I can't lie. Brazil have only just had their first shot. Claudinho on the ball. They just put Inio on the end of everything, don't they? Let's be realistic. Claudinho, that's a great ball into Vinicius Jr. And that is is the equaliser. 1-1. The Real Madrid winger has done the business for Brazil. Brazil have definitely grown back into this game. They had a slow start, but they've definitely peppered France in the last 20 minutes. Now they've had more shots than the European side. And on the brink of half time, Edison is probably somehow going to get an assist. I was joking. He's found Claudinho, who chips it off the crossbar. What a goal that would have been. Brazil can't keep hold of the ball, though. And now it is Nabil Fekir looking to let Kylian Mbappe through. And Edison is there to make the save one-on-one. -on -one. That's a huge save from the Brazilian. Right, half time, we're level here. Statistically, pretty similar. Brazil have got the higher XG. Possession-wise, France are just winning that one out, but they were definitely stronger at the end of the half. I mean, you can see that XG story there bounce up crazily. I have to remind you, this is for quite literally all of the marbles. There's no marbles left on the table here. And N'Golo Kante might have just lost his. It's a red card in the final of the World Cup. France are down to 10 men. They've got to hold on for 20 minutes with a man disadvantage. Brazil have got to go for the jugular here. N'Golo Kante off as well. That's like losing two men at the same time with his stamina. We're into the 84th minute. Any goal here you would imagine would win the World Cup for either of these sides. France have brought on Anthony Martial. Do they want to win this game? France have managed to get it clear and they could break here with Kylian Mbappe. They've got men for This is bold from France to say they're down to 10 men. It's Fekir and it's punched over by Edison. Alas, there are no late heroic and we're going to extra time here in the final. France are going to have to withstand some serious pressure at the end of this game. All they've got to do is hold on for like, what, 25 
mean, that's, that's actually a long time now that I think about it. Oh, this one's it's actually going to go to penalties, isn't it? I'm actually depressed. They've got a free kick in their own half. Please. I can't let this go to pens. I'm sorry. I've got dinner to make. Kylian Mbappe on the ball. It's from distance and it's an absolute screamer. That is the X factor that Kylian Mbappe brings. That is a ridiculous goal. Why has he even tried it from there? He's picked it up about 30 yards out, dribbled slightly wide and then beaten Edison at his near post. Maybe he'll think he could have done a little bit better given it was his near post, but that is sensational from Kylian Mbappe. And Brazil have got five minutes if they want to get back into this World Cup and what a save from Manian to deny Gabriel Jesus. That's ridiculous. That might have just won France the World Cup, that save. Can they grab a late goal? They can't. France are your winners. France have won the 200 team World Cup. After every nation being in the same tournament, the team that wins it, the one that won it last time. I don't know why the goalkeeper's waist is extremely small, but we don't need to talk about that. France are your World Cup winners after extra time. That is it then. The cartwheel is done there. It's over. Some crazy moments, some crazy scorelines, but we are done here. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to slap a like on it and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. I want to shout out Viz or Vizza who's done a video using this mod as well or this download uh, his link to that video will be down in the description as well as the lovely people over at bbc sounds who i told you about earlier on in this video massive shout out to them again for sponsoring this one you can also follow me on social media it is at official fng on twitter and on insta it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a wonderful day enjoy yourselves and goodbye